Hey, good evening. Uh, it's been about a month. No, three weeks since I tied a fly. So I'll tie another one. Uh, today's my mom's birthday. Uh, this is not necessarily a birthday fly for her because I've already tied a fly for her, but we can make this one for her as well. Um, so I thought that I would tie a very, very tiny streamer. Um, I used to keep these in my fly box um, for times when I was just messing around um, to see if I could get someone to or something to bite. Um, I'm going to turn this around so you can see my hook. So this is a very tiny hook. Let's zoom this in. Very tiny hook. As you can see from the size of my fingernail, my thumbnail, it's very small. Um, but you'd be surprised the size of fish you could catch on a hook this size. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started and we'll talk about it as I'm tying. So I'm using uh, dark brown unithread ADOP. Um, the reason I'm using dark brown is because I'm using a grizzly hackle. Normally I would do this with just plain white, but I, honestly I don't know what I did with my white hackle. So I've got this grizzly hackle that's striped, and it's kind of a brownish black stripe on a white back. Um, so anyway, um, but you can tie it any variety of colors. I tend to find that the, the whites and the contrasting colors tend to draw the fish for things like streamers. So that's what I went with. Um, in fact, at my cabin in East Texas, um, after the floods last year, or year before last, I went to the camp and went fishing, and there was a bunch of, I guess they were white bass or crappie, that were in the creek, and I had never seen those before in the creek, and I was fishing with a streamer. It wasn't this kind, but it was a streamer that was a white tail and a black body and a white hackle on the front and in about maybe half an hour I caught about seven or eight fish <clears throat> it was pretty good but as you can see this is a very small hook the box that I had these in says R30 uh, dry fly size 12 but I'm pretty sure that I switched the boxes on this because um, this is definitely this definitely looks smaller than a size 12 but I may be wrong it's been a while since I've had to use these kind of hooks um, so anyway so I just started my thread here I want to be careful not to use too much thread because I don't want it to build up too fat of a body for this. It doesn't need to be a big, thick, fat body. But I just put a couple of layers on here um, just to uh, coat the hook, give it some uh, friction so that the feathers don't pull off. So I've got this. These are two um, capes of hackles from a hen or from whatever they are. I don't know. Uh, so when you have these there's a bunch of different lengths and each of these lengths has a, the barb length on the feather is a little longer so you have to choose short ones so I've chosen for my hackle I've chosen this little feather as you can see when you bend it you can see how far it'll stick up and that's pretty good for this one so that's for around the body but I want to go up to the very top here. You see there's these really little short pointy feathers. I'm going to pull three or four of these off to tie in for the tail. So I'll go ahead and do that. So 
So yeah, I got about four of them. I'm just gonna try to get them about the same length. So I'm just gonna line up the ends. I'm just gonna pinch them together. And I like for these to be kind of long, these uh, streamers. It's not a very big streamer, so to have the length of the tail considerably longer than the body is pretty uh, significant. But I'm gonna go ahead and tie this in. Sometimes when you're tying feathers onto a hook, you have to sneak up on them. You'll try to pull it and they'll wrap around and twist around the thing. So you have to, um, you, you pinch the material and you go up and hold the string and pull down and then you let it pop down onto the feather. And when you do that, it, it grabs it on top of the hook. That's where you want it to be on top. So, I only had a couple of turns on this thing, so I want to be careful. Like just then, I almost pulled it out. In fact, let me back that off and put it back. Make sure these are still lined up. I'm going to take this one out and just make it three. That one was kind of going its own direction. So let me show you this again. So I've got this wrapped about to the bend of the hook. It's where I want these feathers to come out. I'm just going to pinch the string and drop it on top. so small it's hard to hold them in line with the, the hook. I almost couldn't get my vise to grab this hook because it's so small and I've been using really big um, really big hooks and it's starting to get a little bit dented and worn out. <laughs> I almost had to switch the heads on my on my vise. So I'm going to bend these up here on the head or the end of the, the end of the feather here. I'm just going to snip these butt ends off like that. I'm just going to keep wrapping forward. Take a few wraps to get those down. I'm going to go back to the back again. I'm going to do a wrap underneath. Let's see, that'll make it make them stand up a little bit. Now one thing you got to be careful with, uh, let me do that one more time because I think I went over that feather. There. One thing you got to be careful with when you're tying is I got this little bit of the hook sticking out and as I'm going around occasionally you'll you'll catch the string on that point and it'll break the string. And then you can either try to restart the thread or you can um, or you can just start over with the whole fly. I haven't done a whole lot yet. So you just caught on it right there. And I can really easily cut this fine thread. This thread is very strong, but it's also very fine. So all I'm going to do now is wrap forward and build up this body just a touch. Now one thing I could do on this one, once you've gotten to this point with the body, there's a couple of ways you can go. And typically when I do these little flies, I'll do the tail and I'll come forward and I'll tie on my hackle and wrap it around the head and then that'll be it. But you could, if you wanted to, with this little tiny thing, you could tie in the next feather here and palmer it forward and have that whole body be fuzzy. Um, I, I don't need it to do that. It's not necessary. Um, I could even take one of these guys and pull up on it and just wrap it forward. 
and let it be fuzzy. Um, but then I have less of a tail. So I'm not going to do that this time. But that's one of those things at this point in the fly that you can just do kind of whatever. This is not a traditional fly. It's just something I made up. Um, kind of a result of tying a fly poorly, <laughs> actually. Um, but you know what? It's fun to fish. You just let the you let the fly line lay in the in the current and let the water take the line down a little bit and then you just let it hang in the hang in the current and um, caught a couple of really good fish that way especially when they're not hitting on top water um, you know, if they're not rising to a fly that means they're going to be going after stuff down in the water column somewhere so I've um, I've gone a couple of times back and forth. I'm gonna wrap a little bit more up here because this the tail end is a little bit fatter right here than this side. As you can see, it's just a little bit I've got marker on my finger at work. Um, it's a little bit fatter towards the tail than it is at the front. I always want it to taper towards the head, up towards the head. So I'm just gonna take a couple of turns and then start here and build that back up to the head. But on a hook like this, you do need to be careful because very easily your thread can get fatter than the head is. And when you get to the end, you try to tie it off. Those those loops that you make will fall over the head, and then your fly can come untied. Okay, so I've got my fly. I've got my um, feather prepared. This is the one that's going to go around the hackle. Um, that right there was hard to do while watching the screen. Let's see if I can hold this so you can see. Get my hand in a different position. There we go. So what you do here is you just um, you pick a point somewhere between the where the eye of the hook is and the point of the hook here. And it's about a third, half to a third in. And you make this so that the there's different ways you can tie it where the shiny side is out or the rough side is out and it just makes it do different things um, the way that it lays on the hook but either way you hold it at an angle against the shaft here the shaft against the shaft of the hook and you just tie that on get that up like it's supposed to be and then it gets it started at an angle and then so you can go behind it here to make it stand up a little more and then a couple of turns here and this one's going to work out fine to where I can just tie that butt end tie it right in and that's all the turns I want to do and I'm going to very carefully use my hackle plier here I'll back this back out a little bit um, Got a hackle plier, and you just grab the end. Of the hackle, and you just have something to hold on to, and then you just wrap forward. You just do touching turns here. You just gotta be careful with these hackles because they're so delicate. several turns and you pick it up with your thread to tie it off so I got three turns there holding it I could probably pretty easily just snap this off but I don't tend to like to do that because with my luck I try to break it and it breaks off behind where I tied it off and then it just makes a mess of the fly so now I can push back 
on these feathers, on these barbs of the feather. I don't even know what you call those, that part of the feather, but I call it barbs. Just try to pull back and try to catch over the top of them to make them lay back. I'll try wetting my fingers and pull it back that way. See if it helps it. Basically, if I'm going to use a dark thread, I just want to build a good head on it, so it looks like it's supposed to be there. Okay, that's pretty good right there. I'll do that, and then I'll go with my whip finishing tool. I should probably do a half hitch. flies like this. As long as you can get them laying back like that a little bit, you're good to go. And then come in with your whip finish. Couple of barbs, that's okay. Just come in and catch this here. Cut that away. Just trim those off. And the only problem with having those barbs there, I mean, for one thing, it just makes it look a little bit more rough, but when you when you finish your fly and you have those barbs laying over the eye of the hook and then especially after you put on a little bit of nail polish or whatever you use for glue I use nail polish because it's cheap and easily found in a store just put a little bit on here just get it all around I tie off so um, those barbs lay across the eye of the hook and then you get nail polish on them it makes it a little bit difficult when you're in the river and you have to tie on a new fly um, to get that fly line that leader material to go into that eye it's very difficult sometimes and y your tools will have little little pointed things or you can use another hook or something to kind of clean that eye of that hook out but that's pretty much it just a little tiny streamer um, got this feather here that's wanting to hang to the other side but well, pretty much whenever you start fishing with it it'll start laying together with the other ones. It'll kind of get a memory and go the direction it's supposed to go. Um, and it doesn't really do much as far as the way that the fly trails in the water. Uh, it'll pull straight a current much stronger than this little fly. Um, so, and you know, fish might grab those pieces and break them off or whatever. But I've, I've caught a fish that was a good 14 inches or something on this little tiny fly like this and usually like I said I'll use white thread and I'll use just pure white feathers or I might do all white with a, maybe a red head or an orange head or something that'll make it stand out a little bit but that's pretty much it just a little tiny streamer on a very tiny hook tie them up pretty easy if you're not 
yapping like I was, you can tie you know these in a couple of minutes if you have your stuff ready and you're tying them just one after the other. But I tend to, whenever I go fishing, I'll tie three or four flies to try, and then I'll go fish with those three or four flies. I don't sit and tie a whole box full of one fly. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, it's fun. Have a good night.